It's KaderetCoach.com, and today we're asking the question, do you need to polish the capsule to remove micro debris? So the question is, does anterior or even posterior capsule polishing when the eye is in the aphagic state, does that help prevent posterior capsule pacification or, or bad contraction of the capsule bag? Is there a use there? So we're starting off with this case. Now, in this case, I've enhanced the red reflex dramatically because the cataract is the type that causes all this opacity. So you can see here in the periphery of the lens, I'm going to use the chopper to fixate the eye and hold it. But you can see not the best red reflex, and that's because there's a lot of cortical opacity here, especially in this area where I'm going to do the rexus. Notice how I grab it and I go through the area of opacity and don't let go until I can see it again. There, that's important, because if you let go of the capsule over that opaque area, it'll become very difficult to re-grab it. So you don't want to have that issue. So here we go, completing our capsule rexus. Also in a case like this, where you don't have the best red reflex, you definitely need to adjust the microscope settings like I've done here. And that's to bring a stronger red reflex in. I'm going to do some hydro dissection. There's a little delineation. There's that golden ring of delineation. I'm going to get this nucleus up out of the capsule bag. So now a little more viscoelastic to coat the endothelium. That's a dispersive, of course. And now we're going to put the phaco probe in the eye. We're going to put our chopper in here as well. And I'm going to buzz into the nucleus. Chopper goes on the periphery, and we cut in half. So now I have two halves. Each one can be emulsified very rapidly. So again, in a case like this where the visualization is poor, I definitely like to get the lens out of the capsule bag. I know I'm operating then away from the poster capsule in a safer zone or safer area. And so here we go, bringing forward the last bit of the nucleus. And you can see it's been very efficient, only about two minutes into the surgery, and the entire nucleus is removed. Now we're going to come to the irrigation aspiration to remove the cortex. And here now, because I've adjusted that lighting, you'll see there's a beautiful red reflex. A very strong red reflex. And as we do that, IA probe goes in the eye, removing the, the cortex. And we'll go around. And you're going to notice there's a lot of lens material, micro debris, tiny stuff, on the undersurface of the anterior capsule rim. So again, just removing the cortex first, and you can see that reflex will allow us to see that there's a lot of material there on the undersurface. So I'll go under here, get that last bit of cortex out, and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to vacuum the undersurface, there we go, of that anterior capsule. So I'll clean out the capsule bag as best as we can. Now, in the sub incisional area, it's not as easy to get underneath that area to polish the undersurface of the bag. You can use a bimanual approach. Some surgeons like a power wash technique with BSS on a cannula. And other surgeons even use dedicated instruments such as capsule polishers, the shepherd ones. So here's filling the capsule bag completely. There's a nice round rexus. And here we see there is still some remnant of uh, micro debris on the undersurface there of the capsule. Now, studies have gone both ways. Some studies show that there's no benefit of polishing away these cells. Other studies show there may be some benefit, maybe to achieve a better effective lens position. Who knows? Maybe refractive accuracy could be a little better predicted. But other studies show that if you do the, piece, the capsule polishing of the anterior capsular rim, you may actually get more proliferation of lens epithelial cells and a higher rate of PCO. So what should you do? You tell me. You should do what's best in your hands, and I'd love to hear your explanation as to why.